I'm a preacher of the Word of God. I'm out here to call you out of this life of sin. Porn watching is sin. Cigarette smoking is sin. You guys need the fear of God. Fear God. Hey, the Bible says that outside of the dogs, the sexually immoral, the idolaters, all those that love and lie, outside are they. They do not enter in to the glory of God. How are you going to enter into God's presence? You need the power of the word of God. You need God to cause you to approach him through Christ. You become a Christian when you renounce your sins. The Bible says, since we have this ministry, as we have received grace, we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Pornography is shame. We have renounced them. I renounced my porn watching. Yeah, I used to watch porn. I used to guzzle his fears. I used to come to this sand bar when I was in high school and chase after the bikinis, the women. And I found out that she is not a faithful woman. No, there's no faithfulness in their mouth. It says, and their inward part is destruction. The throat is an open till. Oh, as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. And in fear of you, I will worship towards your holy temple. Leaving in your way, O oh Lord, be like this for your name's sake. Yeah. Guys, we're sounding the trumpet. We're sounding the trumpet. Get right with God. Get right with God. He's coming back. He's coming back to judge the earth. Hell yeah. Yeah, you're not ready. You are not ready to be judged. Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Revelation 19, it says, Then I heard another loud voice as of a great multitude saying, Hallelujah. Salvation. And glory and honor and power be to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. True and righteous are his judgments. Hallelujah! He has judged the great whore, the great whore who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. God's the judge. God's righteous. I just know I need to be right with God. I could go at any time. So, but I mean, you can't. You can't live. You can't live back to my original statement. Yeah. Are you saying that God and Jesus won't forgive me? Well, He will if you're if you're willing to turn and open your heart to Him. So I got to do that my whole life, though. Yeah, it's a life of a life of holiness, a life of truth, sanctification. Sanctification is do where. Think, do you think He judges you me the whole time in my life? Well, God loves you. He, he doesn't. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to do bad to you. He wants. He's. He's trying to correct you as a father. Do you think the whole time that he's judging me, though? I feel like he would be. Like, all right, all right. He did that bad thing, but how does he feel about it? Does he realize his mistakes? Well, yeah, I see that. That's what God does. Yeah, but, but, but there's a there's a. Hey, I, it was good talking. I, yeah, I just wanted to talk to you for a okay. minute, man. Keep okay. doing your thing, man. All right. Keep doing your thing. Okay. Make sure you get right with God. You got to repent, though. <laughs> Always. No. Let's cross the. the, the do you have a question or? No. Okay. We 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 just came out. The Lord sent us out here to preach. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He came out. We come out here because people need the gospel. They need repentance. Do you have any faith? Do you have any faith? I'm atheist. Oh. Okay. Well, you have a science major. Well, that's fine. That's that's. You can be a science major, but the thing is, is what about your conscience? What about the right and wrong? No? I mean, I think there's someone up there. I just don't know who. Yeah. Well, you know, when you read the word and you pray, you ask God, God, who are you? Where are you about? I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm sincere. God will show himself to you. You're fighting against the Lord. We come out here in the name of the Lord. Bible says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We come out here in the name of the Lord. Whose name do you come out here in? That's the question. Are you coming out here in the name of the world? You know, you know here's the problem. There's the love. You guys, you all talk about so much love. Uh, I love I love people. I treat people the way they wanted to be treated. But, but, but what happens? You hate the preacher. Seems like the preacher is the only one that people think should be loved. Seems like the preacher is the only one that you think should go to hell. When the preacher wants to see you come to Christ, the preacher wants to see you get saved, come out of your sin, and be blessed. You know, the Bible says that God wanted to bless 
every one of you hey, and turning you away from the set. I'm, I'm a Christian. You're making this kind of look bad out here. You're, you're making Christians look bad. Look at you with two beers in your hands. I'm sober. It doesn't matter. You're out here. You're out here with just the party scene. You're making living it look so bad. You, you know what the Bible says about Christians? Christian, you don't see your Christians. You're all just a bunch of a nasty Christian. Hey, hey, living in sin. Living in sin. You know, you know, you know what the Bible says in First Peter? It says about Christians. It says you spent enough of your past lifetime doing the will of the nations, in which you walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. Listen, Christians don't participate in drinking parties. That's what it says in First Peter. They don't get lewd. You guys know about lewd and lasciviousness? Wearing bikinis, wearing your thong. That's lewd. Listen, God wants to change you from the inside out. He, start, he starts here, God starts here, and then he changes your whole conduct. He changes the clothes you wear. He changes the way you talk, the way you act. God changes your personality. He starts from the inside out. So Christians don't do these kind of things. The blood of Jesus cleanses of all sin. The Bible says if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have a fellowship one with another. You guys are walking in darkness. You don't have to know what you're stumbling at right now. It might be daytime, but it is dark in your heart right now. It is dark in your heart if you're enjoying that. Do that, man. That's wicked. Wicked. Why would you do that? Wicked. There's women out here that are going to flash their breasts at us. That's not right. That's not right. How is that Christian? How is that Christian for a woman to do that? That's wickedness. Women are supposed to be covered in modest. They're not supposed to be dressed but modestly like here in the swimsuits. They are modest. I love, I love Christians. I love the Bible. I love, love Christians. Love the Bible. What else? I love God. We love the Lord. Love God. But do you love that beer in your hand? Yes. You love that beer? The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in it. That's fine. That's You're loving that, sir. You're giving yourself to die! You're giving yourself to it! It's become your God, sir. It's become your God. It's a demon. It's an idol. It's wicked. Pour it out on the ground. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out on the ground. Pour it out, sir. Pour that wicked dilly dilly on the ground. Pour the dilly dilly on the ground. Get rid of it. Before it takes you to hell. It's not bad. It is. Why is it bad? Why is it bad? Yes, guys. Yes, you just drunk wine, but you did not get drunk on wine. This is humility. This is humility out here. People are not humble before God. They're coming out here with, with a harlotry, showing themselves off, showing off their bodies, putting them on display like trophies. Why would you do that? You think God is pleased with it? You think God looked down upon Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh, Sodom and Gomorrah and was pleased with it? Or do you think he looked down upon the people during the, before the flood of Noah and said, I, I, I love what they're doing, killing themselves and, and and putting all kinds of wicked substances in their body. And having wicked sex out of marriage, all these things. And God wants to cleanse you up and set you free from your sin. The Bible says he that speaks the word against the son of man, it should be forgiven him, the Bible says. You can do these things against the Lord and forgive you. But if you continue in sin, you will be destroyed. There will be no remedy. The Bible says if a sin willfully up there to receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. We're not going to drink out of this. We're not going to drink out of this. But you guys are trampling in the foot the Son of God right now. You guys are counting Jesus an unholy thing. When Jesus came to deliver you from the power of sin, the power of sin, sin will not have dominion over you, the Bible says. You have your fruit under holiness and we end everlasting life. Where's the holiness? Where's the holiness? How are we doing it wrong? Man? Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently at any man full of the grace of God, it says. You guys are taking the grace of God like, for granted. Like, 
I can do whatever I want and receive the grace of God. But you know, God's grace is going to run out someday. His patience is going to run out on you. You could die in your sin today and not make it into the kingdom of God. You guys could get hit by a boat today. Somebody, some drunk person could hit you with a boat. And this could be your last day. A last day on the sandbar. You spent your last day in a drunken party showing off your American flag swimsuits and all the wicked things. Where are you? And then someone hits you with a boat and you're dead. This could be your last day on earth. He'll test your pride. He'll test your ego. He'll test you things that you glory in. In the flesh, you will follow those things into the mouth of hell. Into the mouth of hell. That's why we're concerned about our neighbor. That's why we're concerned about our friends and we come home here. That's why we come home here. Preaching repentance. No, Jesus Christ, he said, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You know that tax collectors and harlots, they entered the kingdom of God before the religious people of the time? There were religious people in the days of Jesus that studied the scriptures, but they didn't leave it out. You know, they said that they had faith, but they didn't have any kind of hearts to follow their faith. I need a police department over here. So why, why do prostitutes and harlots enter the kingdom of God before the religious people? Why, why do they do that? You know why? It's because of the forgiveness of Christ. It's because you can be forgiven by repentance and faith for Jesus Christ. For everything that you do. That's the baptism of John. The baptism of John was repentance and returning away. It was a new creation. It was putting the old man to death and the new man would come forth from the water. A baptism. John chapter 3. No, I'm sorry, not John. Luke chapter 3 says, While Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So he was preaching to go and sin no more. John the Baptist, he was preaching that if you have two cloaks, if you have two pieces of clothing, give one to your neighbor who has none. He says, don't, don't use extortion. Don't, don't abuse your authority. He was teaching the ways of righteousness, the ways that please God. And people were crying out. They were saying, what must we do to be saved? They, were, they knew that they needed a new life. They knew that they needed a change. They knew that they needed a touch from God. And that touch comes through repentance. It comes through repentance. So he went all around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Show of hands. How many people think they're good people going to heaven? Show of hands. Okay, I'm glad you guys are honest. I'm glad you guys are honest. Very honest crowd. Show of hands. How many people knew that Jesus Christ hates sin? Show of hands. Can you guys make this One liar. Okay, one liar. One liar. Okay. So, so we've got one liar. At least the rest of you are honest. And you've never read the Gospels, obviously. That's why you're choosing to sin. How many of you watched pornography yesterday? How many of you watched pornography? Okay, thank you for the sound check. Thank you for the sound check, guys. We just wanted to make sure that everything was working well. Thank you for the sound check. So, so Jesus Christ gives us wisdom. What kind of wisdom is in your brain? Porn destroys you. Porn takes you to hell. Porn ruins marriages. Porn ruins lives. Why do you love things that destroy you? Why do you love things that ruin you? Jesus says he who sins is a slave of sin. So you love being a You love being a slave? You love slavery? You love slavery. You love slavery. Why do you love slavery? Why do you love slavery? Jesus says he who sins is a slave of sin. You're a slave to that pornography because it controls you. You don't control it. It has power over you. You don't have power over it. That's right, guys. Just so you know, throwing things at other people is technically outside by the law. Until I come. So don't assault people. Jesus says, if you did it to the least of them, you did it to me. Don't assault God. When you assault his servants, you assault God. 
When you assault your servants, you assault God, guys. If you want to go to heaven, you have to become holy. But most of you are horny. Most of you are horny. You're not holy, guys. Listen, we want to see you go to heaven. Why don't you want to go to heaven? Jesus wants you to go to heaven. Why do you want to go to hell? Why do you want to go to hell, guys? Jesus says most people go to hell. Why do you want to go where most people go? You like going where most people go? Most people go where the party? Most people go where the party's at. There ain't no party in hell. Why do you want to go where most people go? Why? You're not going to be shotgunning alcohol in hell. Jesus says three times in Mark chapter 9, your worm shall never die. See, this is the good news. I didn't know this. I didn't know that there was a Holy Spirit. I didn't know there's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and that God can speak to you. God can speak to you. I've seen miracles. God's real. See, God is holy and perfect. God doesn't need you. God doesn't need me. God don't need anybody. So you think you're a smart person? You think you go to church on Christmas and Easter and you're going to walk into heaven? You think that's what it takes to go to heaven? Yeah, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Jesus says no man is good. You're not going to walk into God's kingdom, guys. You're not going to waltz into God's kingdom. You're not going to walk into God's kingdom. He's God. God don't need you. God's holy. God don't need anybody. You want to go to heaven? You got to obey God. You want to go to hell? Keep drinking. Keep drinking. You want to go to hell? Drink till, you, drink till you die and burn forever and ever. Jesus says in Luke 16, there's not even one drop of water in hell. You don't even get to taste one drop of water. That's how hot it's going to be. And you think you're hot now. You're going to be burning forever unless you repent. Unless you repent. Jesus says to the Christians in Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus says, if you don't overcome your sins, you're going to taste the second death. You're going to go to hell, Jesus says. Jesus speaks more about hell than heaven. Jesus Christ speaks more about hell than heaven. Is your pastor telling you, is your priest telling you that? No, they want your money. We don't want your money. We want to see you go to heaven. We don't care about your money. Oh, those pastors and priests, they're not telling you these things. They want your money. They tell you the nice message. Most churches, they tell you the nice, easy message. Oh, Jesus loves you, sweetie. God is good. God loves you. God loves you. That's what they tell you in most churches. They lie to you. Most churches are lying to you. They're lying to you. Okay, you can be gay no more. Turn to Jesus. Turn away from the gay and turn to Jesus. Rebuke the gay away in the name of Jesus, man. God is beautiful. He wants to bless you and help you. The Catholic son of the cross and Orthodox sign won't. No, no, no. I'm going to go to heaven. I don't need help. A lot of people here are going to go to hell. They need help.